Okay, and we should be live. And if you got this notification and you're confused, I do not blame you. So I was originally scheduled to go into work at 2 o'clock. So I went to pick up my brother from our grandfather's house and head on over to work. When we got a uh, text message from our, not our store manager, our one of the... <sighs> He's not the supervisor, because that's a different person, but he's basically the supervisor's assistant. Um, that he was in the store, and we weren't particularly busy, and asked if we wanted to come in at 4 o'clock instead. So, we thought about it for a couple minutes, and we're like, yeah, no, we can go in a little bit later. Which means that I now have like an hour and 15 minutes to work on Urza. And considering that New Phyrexia is coming out this weekend, and the fifth anniversary for Opera Omnia is tonight, um, I really want to get more work done on Urza so I can get him done. Uh, so that way, when New Phyrexia hits the... Um, I don't know if it's this week or not. Like, I don't know if we get it this weekend on uh magic arena or if they're waiting because i know they're they keep changing when they do the event for like it used to be it would already be live this week i think i think it would have gone live last thursday so i think it goes live this thursday now so that it lines up with the pre-release or next thursday to line up with the release day and i'm not a hundred percent sure which one it is so I would like to get Urza done so that way when New Phyrexia is draftable, I'm going to want to do a bunch of drafts with it, so I'm going to want to turn on Magic Arena and do some drafting so we could get Urza done before then, so that way I'm working, so that way I'm doing the drafts for the streams instead. Yeah, stream elements did not pop up in my chat again. I'm waiting for it to. Maybe I haven't been live quite long enough. It usually pops up in the first couple of minutes. I did go to stream elements and make sure the bot was enabled and everything. Um, is it in my thing? Yeah. Still listed as a moderator. Okay. Because, yeah, it's not doing anything in chat. What if I type hi in chat? Okay, there I am. So... Yeah, my chat wasn't loading before, so I, like, X'd out of it and reloaded it. So maybe there's something wrong with chat. I hope not, though. I want to make sure that everybody can actually, if they stop by and want to talk to me, they can talk to me. You know, that's kind of one of the things about streaming is being able to interact with other people. Got this little tiny, like, sampler thing from Russell Stouffer's. It's got, like, three chocolate pieces in it. You know, the type of thing I'm talking about. They're usually, like... They used to be a dollar, but now they're probably, like, two dollars, knowing prices and inflation, but... From... Back from Christmas. This one's kind of interesting, though. It's actually got one of the... It's got a really tiny pecan caramel one. Normally, you get, like... Uh... Like a chocolate truffle and a caramel, and then... I think, like, coconut is usually the most common one for the third one. You usually don't get one that has a tree nut in it or something. Yeah, like, one of the more common allergies. So, I'm kind of surprised that there's a cashew one in there. Or a pecan. I think it's a pecan, not a cashew. Sorry. A pecan delight. Yep. It's one of those. So anyway, so my my original plan was to just work on Urza like a tiny bit for like the hour roughly that I had and wound up being like closer to 45 minutes and, and then go to work. But now that I have time, I feel like Memnarch's going to be a cut. Seven mana to cast him. He's a lightning rod for removal and... Our main reason for putting him in there isn't even for his ability to steal our opponent's stuff. It's for the ability to make our permanence an artifact and not until end of turn. Just like, target permanent is an artifact. Ching. 
I still, it's still not a copyable effect, I don't think. Let's see about that. Let's see if there's anything under Memnarch's description. Mem there it is. Uh, the effect of Memnarch's abilities don't end at end of turn, and they don't end when Memnarch leaves the battlefield. Less until the effect of permanent leaves the battlefield. You can use the first ability on a non-artifact permanent. Wait for the ability to resolve, then use the second ability. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, nothing useful there about whether or not being... I don't think becoming an artifact from him is a copyable thing, even though it doesn't end at end of turn. It might be, though. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure on the ruling on that one, but I'm almost entirely positive that it doesn't work that way. It has to, like, the, uh, what's its name, the Phyrexian Metamorph should work that way because it's a characteristic defining ability of its own game text, so it is always an artifact regardless of what it's copying, so... Doing things with that should still work, but I'm going to eat this little caramel Russell Stouffer thing. really like Revel Arc for this deck. We have a lot of two power less creatures that we could get back with it. But and we can make the token the biggest problem is if we make the token copy of it we have to have Ashnod's altar, not um what's its name? Uh Crocland Ironworks. Or we won't be able to sacrifice it very easily. And we don't have like anything else to sacrifice our permanence to. Nor do I particularly want anything else. The only other thing that's even remotely reasonable is Phyrexian Altar. And we need a large volume of mana. And most of our things work with colorless. So we don't need a ton of colored mana anyway, which makes the Phyrexian... The Phyrexian Altar is already worse because it only makes one mana. So... There's a... Like, it takes a lot more for us to go infinite with that one than it would the other two. The other two, letting us get two colorless mana from them, just allows for so many more things to work properly. I'm going to eat the other half of this thing. Okay. Wash it down with a sip of water and we're all good. So we cut basically everything it feels like that isn't either part of our combo Something that gets part of our combo. Stops the opponent from interacting with pieces of our combo. Or gives us something to do 
in the meantime to like distract the opponents basically like we have esper sentinel wandering archaic rhystic study and smothering tithe to all distract them get them to spend their mana on other things or give us resources while they develop out their board um Those might be the least on theme things, which would be like four cuts from the deck, but I kind of like where they're at with this build. Like each one of them is giving us more to work with or forcing our opponents to pay more mana to not give us more to work with which is giving them less to work with. And if we get them to give a like if we get them to spend their mana on those things, they're less likely to be able to interact with our deck if it actually just like drops some things and gets into position to actually win the game. Like all of a sudden they don't have the mana they would need to interact with it and we get to win. can probably cut Lazatet plating. It's basically a weird counter spell in our deck, and we have other counters. Like, giving myself and my stuff hexproof is the same as countering anything that targets me or my stuff a lot of the time. The only slight upside is that <clears throat> it would only protect my things from something that is messing with everybody. Like, if somebody goes for... Uh, decimate or casualties of war or something and they choose like one of my cool artifacts to blow up and other stuff from other players and I lazatep plating the other stuff still gets blown up is probably the biggest thing but <clears throat> at the same time that's a kind of narrow reason to run a card when I already have all of the other counter spells that I do I'm wondering if we don't cut either Disallow or Summary Dismissal. I like both of them, especially in Commander. Like, being able to counter activated or triggered abilities is super, super useful a lot of the time. Like maybe... Also, I could see cutting Torrential Gear Hulk and or Overcharged Amalgam. Like, they're originally in here because we could potentially activate Urza to make another copy of them to counter the thing. Which means that while we have one of them in play and Urza and six mana, our opponents can't do anything unless they want to first disrupt that setup. Then to win that was also an argument for keeping in the something like the ether sworn canonist where they go for a spell and we can counter it by activating urza instead of casting a spell which also lets us cast like one of our non-artifact spells and then when the opponent goes for the counter we can counter back without even though we're not allowed to play another non-artifact spell, we can go for the counter back, and then they can't play another counter, because most artifacts don't counter spells. Like, there are no... I don't know if there's any artifact with Flash naturally that would be able to counter a spell. There are certainly artifacts that can counter spells, but they normally have to have already been in play. So you would need to give one of those type of cards Flash in order for that to work, and... That seems like an awful lot of hoops to jump through, and I'm wondering what this deck looks like and what its commander is that's running those cards in that combination in order to do that type of thing. Because we do have a bunch of other counter spells that are cheaper. Or that do more like... The biggest problem with the Amalgam 
is that in order for it to keep count, like first it has to sacrifice one of our other creatures to counter the spell, then we have to be able to turn it into an artifact, then we can make a copy of it, then we can counter another spell, and while that's not absurdly hard with this deck, it's also not super likely to happen all the time when we need it to. Like we're we're jumping through a couple of hoops to set that up and it's not guaranteed that we will always be able to set those hoops up to jump through them on top of that. So yeah, maybe maybe we get rid of overcharged amalgam too. What are the other two overs? Shadow over Innistrad and Overload on Cyclonic Rift. Okay. Now I was curious. Got three instances of the word over. So let's see. We need 53 more cuts and we're good. Yeah, the, these ones are going to be hard now. We got through all of the all of the chaff and all of the distractions, and now we need to get rid of and the worst part is like all of this stuff is good for what we are attempting to do now. There's a part of me that thinks I'm going to wind up cutting, like, <laughs> I finally found a deck where cards like Rhystic Study and um, Smothering Tithe would actually be working towards what the deck is trying to do, not just being thrown in there for the sake of throwing them into the deck, and they might still get cut, and that's kind of funny to me. <laughs> <sighs> What are we going to do? What are we going to cut? We still need to cut almost half the deck. Like, what one in every two cards kind of needs to go. So... Probably need to cut a couple more mana rocks. Don't think I have room for all of them. Let's see. I feel like Hedron Archive's going to go. It's more expensive than the other ones. It draws me two cards potentially. Did I already cut the uh, Mind Stone? It looks like I did. Right, because it would have been up here. Okay. So Yeah, I was thinking I could cut Mindstone too, but apparently I already did. Um so if we cut Dreamstone or not Dreamstone, we want to keep Dreamstone. I uh, I think we want to keep Dreamstone anyway. The ones that tap for three are Mana Vault, Basalt Monolith, Grim Monolith. That's one, two, three. Dynamo is four. With the right setup, um, Power Stone Shard is five. So we would have five artifacts that can tap for three mana so that way when we have the thing that's two to untap an artifact we have infinite mana with any of those so maybe we can cut both hedrons then like hedron is another way to generate infinite mana but it also lets us draw two cards and we do have um the academy ruins on the list so
And it is still mildly bothering me that um, Stream Elements is not that, like, its little chat bot hasn't popped up and said, oh, hey, by the way, you're live. Like, I know I am live because I checked that before just to make certain that that's what was going on. But, yeah, it's not over here letting everybody know in, in the chat that's like, oh, hey, I'm live. The announcement has gone out and everything. Kind of like, yeah. So yeah, that's mildly bothering me. It, it frustrates me because my chat wasn't loading properly at first. And I had to like undock it and then redock it, and then now it hasn't done the thing. <sighs> All right, well, worrying about it isn't super helpful right now. So yeah, getting back to the whole hedron things, I'm like glancing over at it just to make sure nobody's talking, and the fact that it hasn't popped up yet is still kind of bothering me. So if we got rid of the two hedrons, we would still have, looks like plenty of mana sources to ramp with. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be both of these. Alright, so we search for the word Hedron, and go ahead and, oops. Dreamstone. Get rid of Archive. We're going to need to get rid of some of them, so we might as well bite the bullet and get rid of those two. Brings us down to 111. Clear this off. Save. And I eat half of this pecan delight now. Actually, this one's tiny. Guess we'll just eat the whole thing. I'm tempted to cut Merchant Scroll. The only things it can go get are Counter Spells and Mystical Tutor. So, theoretically, it could get Mystical Tutor, and then Mystical Tutor could get Enlightened Tutor or Idyllic Tutor or some such to the top of our deck. But that is the best it can do. And the other option is, of course, to go grab, like, Force of Will or Mana Drain or something for Pact of Negation, and then try and go off that one turn. So that is my other option with it. Hmm. I have to cut 51 cards from this list, so even stuff that is doing exactly what we want it to do is kind of dicey here. <sighs> what if we cut the Urzatron? If we cut the Urzatron, we can cut Weathered Wayfarer and <sighs> Expedition Map also.
The problem is we have so much use for the mana. I could definitely see leaving them in here. We're running out of stuff, though, that I can just go ahead and cut and not have to worry about the fact that we just cut it. Like, we're, we're, we're at the end of things that... Yeah, we cut everything that wasn't focused on the deck in some way. Like, anything that was adjacent to the strategy, anything that was fun but not necessarily good... We cut Glass Dust, Hulk, and Kappa Cannoneer. Both of them can take out a player in the same turn that we go infinite, basically. If they were already in play, they can very easily just like, oh, I'm just going to make a hundred artifacts with Urza real quick. And since I did that, I'm going to attack you with my hundred and three Glass Dust, Hulk, or my hundred and whatever the base power is. I think it's base powers four on the Kappa. They're both okay. The problem is, is that they only kill one player. So we would have to take out the player that has the best chance of beating us through what we've done, but if we've done what I'm planning on doing, which is like creating hundreds of spheres of resistance, then we don't super need to win the game because nobody should be able to do anything. Although every once in a while you will run into a player that either doesn't need to cast a spell necessarily to win, they need the activated abilities of their cards or we'll be in a situation where I will have created, like, uh, Thorns of Amethyst or um, Lodestone Golems instead of Sphere of Resistance specifically, and there will be an opponent with a creature or an artifact that will mess up our combo. You know, they'll just go, oh, well, here's Oblivion Stone and pop it, or... Here's one of the few creatures that can wrath the board and actually kill everything, you know, like a Crater Hillian or something would wipe our board most of the time. And if I've made too many of those things and not enough, and I don't have any ways to reduce the cost of my spells, which most of our cost reduction stuff is currently only for artifacts... Do we need the cost reduction anymore? Like, we have a bunch of ramp. Cost reduction works better when you're trying to cast multiples of, like, either multiple spells or replay the same spell multiple times in a single turn is where cost reduction works. Because otherwise, like, if I only cast one spell, then Ethereum Sculptor isn't that much different from... Like, allow more elves that only works for artifacts. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm only casting one big spell and I make it cost one less, then the the sculptor has essentially provided one mana. Whereas if I wanted to cast an artifact, sacrifice it to Ironworks, return it to my hand, and recast it with by, like, activating things, then... Each time I cast it, I'm saving a mana, so if I manage to cast it three times, an Ethereum Sculptor was worth three mana that turn, um, instead of just the one. And I don't know how many artifact spells I'm going to be casting in a single turn. We're much better off with activated cost reduction than we are with the Sculptor reducing it. <sighs> Yeah, I don't think we actually need the cost reduction. The other thing about the cost reduction, though, is that we can create multiple copies of him so that our artifact spells are still castable. 
under our own um whatchamacallit, our own um sphere of resistance effects. But that's only going to be true for our artifacts and only if we have enough mana or infinite mana at that point to just make infinite Ethereum sculptors to back up the infinite pile of, you know, I guess it would be Thorn of Amethyst at that point. Or Sphere of Resistance, since the Lodestone Golem doesn't affect our artifacts. And we don't have any of the other ones, like I cut the uh, Stone Calendar, so that won't really be an issue. But yeah, let's go ahead and cut the Ethereum Sculptor. I think that's going to be one of the things that we can cut. And yeah, we can probably cut the Glass Dust and the Cannoneer. So, yes, let's go do that. Hmm... Probably don't have room for the dark steel plate. Like, it's in here almost exclusively to go on Urza, so that way he doesn't die and leave all of the, um, all of his soldier tokens vulnerable to, like, an Elish Norn being in play, or, um, Massacre Worm, or Demon of Dark Schemes, or any of those type of effects. A any, any infest variant, basically. Um... If, or pyroclasm. If I can keep all of my artifact creatures above that threshold, that'd be great. It does help that Urza himself is a 2 3, so he, he's less likely to die to those effects, also, and therefore keeps the rest of them going. But yeah, if something were to happen to him, a lot of our guys could suddenly find themselves just falling apart due to another effect. And I would like to avoid all of our hard work going away just because one of our cards left the battlefield. But at the same time, we are running super low on options for what we can cut. <sighs> Unwinding Clock helps us set up, but it costs four mana to do that. Like, basically... What we can do with something like Unwinding Clock is use our artifact mana to activate Urza during each player's turn as we go around in order to build up a couple of something. Probably, ideally it would be like the Heartstone or something, but you know, just to make a handful of artifact creatures with that effect so that way when we get back to our turn, all of a sudden we can do a lot more. That being said, that's kind of just okay. Like, w there are definitely decks where Unwinding Clock is silly. Like, you just, you know, it's great when you want to go, like, oh, I'm going to go turn one uh, Mana Vault I into Grim Monolith into this thing. And, oh, it's your turn now, so I untap my six mana worth of stuff without having to spend the eight mana on it. Instead, I spend a single card. And... Yeah, you know, now I can do stuff. It also helps a lot when you have things like uh, Liberator or uh, any of the other things that we had that would enable Flash on our spells, on our artifact spells. So that way we keep getting the mana back and keep getting to use it to cast stuff and so on in that manner until the end of time, basically. <laughs> So War of Invention is always going to be triple blue. It is an instant, though, and it does tutor for all of our combo pieces. Like, Ur Urza sits over there in, in his little safe zone, but we can get things that do any of the stuff that we need in order for Urza to actually win. <sighs> yeah, I think Narset's going to go. Alright, what do I want... If I could copy stuff with Spark Double, what is it going to be? Like, what are our Legends, what are our Planeswalkers that we have left? I don't think there's... Well, there's not going to be anything in the first few sets, because there weren't any of either of those card types, but... Heartstone, Intruder Alarm, all of these... 
Time Spiral, Grim Monolith, Palancron's not legendary. Weathered Wayfarer, Duplicant, Gilded Lotus, Mirror Retriever, Sad Robot. Copy Memnarch, woohoo, that'd be not the most helpful thing unless one copy of him was about to die. Um, copy Arkham, also not the most helpful. Sanctum Gargoyle, Expedition Map, Lodestone Golem. Copy Padim, but that's not necessarily anything. I mean, we get an extra card draw. Assuming we have the most expensive thing. We can copy Karn. Uh, I think we passed Tezzeret, too, and I did not note him. We could copy Tezzeret. Tezzeret might be the strongest thing that we could copy with Spark Double. Um, since then, we can make we can turn it into an artifact and make a copy of that one and then we can down tick it for up to four in order to get whatever artifact we want from our deck or we could plus it to untap like the liquid metal coating and something else to make more mana so that might be the most powerful thing it can do is to copy tezzeret Tameshi does nothing. The other thing is copying Urza, because then we can make infinite Urzas and give all of our guys, but I think at that point I would just rather have um, Coat of Arms in play, so. Um, Muzio is like four mana, activating him twice in a turn. I don't think is going to do much. Uh, we can make more copies of Urza Lord High Artificer. Um, but that's basically just making more of the Golem token. So, that's not as much of a thing. Yeah, I'm starting to think we don't need the Spark Double. There's only like one or two cards it works super well with. And then there's a handful of cards. Uh, we could do Low Shield. So we will get two card draw. There's the Cannoneer. We can go ahead and take that off. Got the Glass Dust Kulk. Yeah, I don't think we need um, Bark Double either. I don't think that's doing enough. Dynasty, Ikoria, War of the Spark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cuts. So that brings us down to 104. Save. All right. So all we need is 44 more cuts. And Urza will be all done. And we just keep running more and more out of stuff that I could be. I guess one of the other fun things about. Um. Spark Double is that if I use it to clone Urza and turn it into an artifact creature, we could power art. Actually, if we turn Urza into an artifact creature until end of turn, provided we have enough mana, we can power artifact him and then start activating him. If like if we have training grounds and that, we can get Urza down to two mana per activation. Yeah, I think power artifact is staying regardless. Like I was wondering if I should cut it. 
just because it only goes infinite with two of our artifact mana sources. But yeah, turning Urza into an artifact until end of turn and enchanting him with this on the turn that we go off, like, we spend the two mana once, and if we activate him more than once, that saves us two mana every time we would activate him, which is probably enough to actually go infinite. So, yeah, I think we want to keep that. I think Merchant Scroll is the weakest tutor we still have. So, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. Silence, Capsize, Heartstone has to stay. Intruder Alarm is still potentially... Very powerful. So Intruder Alarm works with uh, token copies of any of our mana rocks. So we get to, if we use Urza to make, you know, like soul rings or whatnot, and then we get through the turn cycle and we get back to me and I have like a couple of soul rings, I can cast a creature spell and tap them for mana and then untap all of them. Also, if I have enough of those, I can activate Urza infinitely that way. Um, right, Intruder Alarm is comes into play, not cast, right? Not misremembering this. I don't want to... If I'm misremembering this, we can cut Intruder Alarm too. But I'm pretty sure it's whenever a creature comes into play. Yeah, whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. So... If we have Mana Dork artifact creatures by cloning them with Urza, then every time we activate Urza, we would actually untap all of them. Now, the new ones won't have haste, and I don't really want to put, like, Thousand Year Elixir or anything into this deck, but if we have three Soul Ring creatures and Urza costs six to activate, then we have infinite of whatever other thing we want to make, because, including more Soul Rings, theoretically, because every time we activate Urza, we will untap six mana worth of mana dorks production-wise, and we'll just get to go infinite there. Plus, Intruder Alarm is one of those famously powerful combo cards that if your opponent plays it and you can't take advantage of it, you should probably kill it. So it'll distract them from like our other good cost-reduction enchantments if they can't blow up the entire board. You know, if it's not like an austere command or an aura shards where they can make multiple creatures in a turn. Okay, I'm looking at my microphone. You can't hear me snort de derisively at the thought of having to cut more cards as, as I'm just sitting here. It's like, I I'm not sighing. I'm not like... <sighs> and yeah, there goes the microphone. I like get all the way down before I exhale just so I can see that. But yeah, if I just... Same thing, but through the nose. Oh, wait, that one got it. Yeah, it wasn't reacting before when I would just deeply exhale through the nose as I'm looking at these cards. It's just like, I don't know what I want to cut besides this. I don't even really want to cut Merchant Scroll. Like... <clears throat> Do I want to cut Weathered Wayfarer? And just have... Like, if I cut Weathered Wayfarer, I can... What I can do is I can add in um, Talaria West, which would let me transmute Talaria West for one of our uh, Urzatron pieces or one of our other non-basic non lands. Okay. Um... Because those don't require me to have fewer lands than an opponent. 
there's usually somebody that's ramping, and since we're ramping with artifacts, we're more likely to not be the one with the most land in play while still having tons of mana. But I have to cast this thing, I have to wait for it to be able to activate or move around one of my Boots or Greaves things. <sighs> yeah, okay. I can probably go ahead and cut him without necessarily having to cut the Urzatron. So. And also probably cut Workshop Assistant out of all of the ones that let me get back my dead artifacts, because we still have Tameshi too. I can't imagine we need Junk Diver... Um, Mirror Retriever, Tameshi, Workshop Assistant, Dance of the Mance. Um, we cut Emery already. Um, I think we cut Emery. Maybe she's still on the list. But yeah, I don't think we need every single one of those. And I think Workshop Assistant is the worst out of all of them. We should probably cut Memnark too. Part of me wants to have the Thran Forge back in now, but regardless, Memnarch's seven mana, and he's a lightning rod, so it's very easy for us to spend all of that mana and have him instantly die because people are scared of me doing the thing he normally does instead of the thing he's in my deck for, which, to be fair, is still a problem for most players, so he probably still needs to die even if they know where I'm going with him, but... That's true, we also have Codex Shredder to get things back. But yeah, I think we can cut the Workshop Assistant too. I'm always surprised what it picks up and what it doesn't. There, there's just, like, if I really low, like, talking from, like, deep in the throat, it does not register. Like, when I'm just kind of whispering to myself, basically, or, like, very, very low resonance, like, down here, does not pick up sometimes. And it's weird because I'm... Close enough to the mic, I would think it would get it even if, like, it's really weird to me how the noise gate works. Like, my brain does not process what does and doesn't, like, sometimes I'll look at it because I'm talking and realize the mic's not moving and that kind of throws me for a second. So... Uh, I'd hate to get rid of the mirror maid because it can just straight up copy something if we need it to. And immediately also, unlike the six drop thing from New Capenna Commander. And then we could have uh, two... In much the same way I can turn Urza into an artifact and um, power artifact him to go infinite in that turn, being able to just drop this and clone... Um, Training Grounds or something probably accomplishes the same thing for three mana. So. Maybe this is still, like, maybe Wandering Archaic shouldn't still be in the deck. Like, somebody has to cast a spell that it's super important that they cast it, or they have to be, you know, like, trying to team up with me against a single player. Like, that, those are the two times where I get a spell off of Wandering Archaic. So, for the most part, Wandering Archaic is just in there to hamstring mana more. And while he does do a decent job of that, it's still kind of only matters against opponents that we're going to cast instants or sorceries. 
that particular turn, and only if them, you know, if the other one, if the copy becomes redundant, you know, wraths and whatnot, they don't have to pay. So there's only a smaller handful of sorceries in instance that they have to pay for. I guess it's not that small, though. Like, most effects that you're going to cast are either, like, targeted removal, card draw, time walk effects, tutors, you know, anything where I could get any of those benefits and it would actually be good for me. Which means that the opponents are going to be disinclined to set me up that way, but sometimes they won't have a choice in the matter. I don't know, it still could very easily wind up getting cut. I'm I'm grasping at straws for reasons to cut things at this point, because everything works super well in the deck, it's just we can't cram it all in there anymore. So... Now I'm staring at the Nautiloid ship. The Nautiloid ship is slightly worse overall as Graveyard Hate than the Lion Sash is. Because we have to copy the Nautiloid ship to exile another player's graveyard. Whereas the Lion Sash, we can just spend mana to eat things out of the graveyard. The Lion Sash is white to activate, I believe. Let me double check that. Sash is white. There it is. Um, yeah, white exile a card from a graveyard. If it's a permanent, then you put 1-1 one, one counter on Lion Sash. It's going to be a weird game where I have access to the six mana to activate Urza to make another Nautiloid ship, but don't have, like, white mana to activate the uh, Lion Sash. Because if I can activate Urza... To begin, if I have Urza in play to activate for the Nautiloid ship, then I have at least the one white mana from him, which means I had to have spent that on something else, not have gotten another white mana source at any point in time from my deck, and then really need to eat another thing from a graveyard after the Nautiloid ship activation, after copying, after the activation to copy the Nautiloid ship. There we go. Found the sentence. Managed to assemble it from the parts of my brain that were not firing on all cylinders when trying to arrange words there for me. Maybe it's Low Shield. Low Shield is just a way to draw more cards. I don't like cutting all of the card draw, though. I feel like I'm cutting too much. But at the same time, it's kind of like Low Shield is just getting me a card any turn that I can activate Urza, and almost definitely on my turn. <sighs> like, we don't have... Any room left, like, we've already cut everything else, so we have to cut things that are either redundant or not as effective as I need them to be. And I'm starting to wonder if Low Shield isn't just going to... I'm starting to wonder if the Angel of Ruins isn't going to go away too, but I feel like if I cut that, like, what else did I have for um, Artifact and Enchantment Removal that isn't so... That leaves me with Return to Dust and Aura of Silence as my primary artifact and enchantment killing cards. Although, the bright side is that, similarly to the Angel, if I make 
R of Silence an artifact and copy it, I can then immediately sacrifice the um, token creature to destroy an artifact or enchantment, and then I still have the spine and the meteor golem. Yeah, I think we're going to cut the Angel of Ruins then. So. Cut Angel of Ruins. Academy Ruins. Angel of Ruins. Delete her. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut low shield. I think we cut the Nautiloid ship too. Lion Sash is just way cheaper. Also, copies of it can still work. Like, if I want to let different copies eat different things and reconfigure. And then I have a bunch of Lion Sashes with 1-1 one -one counters on them. Hiding underneath my other in play creatures so that way when somebody wraths I have a bunch of artifact creatures left over. Yeah, okay. Alright, so we cut all of these off of the list. Uh one, two, three, four, five, six. Get rid of this one, there's nothing. Oh, seven, Merchant Scroll. Yep, okay. So, down to 97 then? Hey, we got him below 100. Hey. Right. I'm going to take advantage of the other 15 minutes then that I have... Before I go into work, we're almost at an hour, so I think between that and the other short stream, that makes up for what I didn't get to do today that I wanted. So, yeah, all right. And I should be back after work. Hopefully, I can get everything to work. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. Uh, I can actually stream Opera Omnia through my computer with, with only the minimal number of hoops needed to have been jumped through because. I am really looking forward to 5th Anniversary. I'm looking forward to Pinello. I'm looking forward to that giant 50 guaranteed at least one burst super poll that we get to do. Um, and just doing the event. So, yeah, I'm excited about that, and I'm looking forward to it, and I really, really hope this works. Because every time I think I'm going to get it to work and I'm going to be able to stream... Opera Omnia, something else goes wrong and stops me, and it's been really frustrating, because all I want to do is stream games that I already was playing, like, games that I were already, games that I was already playing, yeah, Singular was, for me, I was the one who was doing the thing that I was playing anyway, and it just refuses to work out most of the time, so... Like, I got, like, half a stream the one time before Bluestacks kept crashing my old computer, and now Bluestacks doesn't like Windows 11, and I have to, like, jury-rig it to work, but I think I figured out how to do that, so... Again, fingers crossed, knock on wood, we're gonna try that tonight, and I'm really hoping it'll pan out, so I hope you'll join me for that, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.